You know, the time is now. I'll tell you what happened for me. It's like, I remember going to church when I was a kid and sitting in the, in the pew over here in the choir loft, actually, and, and listening to the preacher, whoever was speaking, talk about peace on earth, goodwill among men, and how Christians ought to serve one another. And, you know, like that. And uh, as I drifted away from church, I heard it less frequently. And now even when I attend church, I hear it less frequently. It's more often something that comes up around Christmas and maybe at Easter. But 15 years ago, when I first heard that, it had meaning for me. It had to do with the way that I felt about myself. Those things that I did, the way I interrelated with my peer group, as I mentioned, you know, I didn't drink and I didn't smoke. There were also other things that I didn't do. There were other things that I did. There were some things that I'm very ashamed of. But what I noticed in all of those experiences is that I had a feeling, you know, it's like I sometimes would see people just being terrible to somebody. A group of kids, there was a gal that I knew, I don't remember her name, but she was... The, she was the ugliest person I've ever seen. You know, and she was also she, actually what I think I came to find out is that she was a, she was a little retarded. She had gotten to the point, you know, where she could go to school. She was in high school. But she she just really had great difficulties and she wanted so much to be liked. She wanted so much to have friends. And the people there who, you know, who didn't understand what was going on mistreated her so terribly. They would come tell her stuff to get her to do something and she would do anything for just some sense of approval, for some sense of relationship, and they would have her do terrible things. And I couldn't bear to watch it. There was a friend that I had in a speech class in college and he stuttered terribly. And people used to laugh at him. And I couldn't bear it. And I always, you know, between classes, I'd walk with him to the next place. I was the only guy I knew that talked with him. And who, when he stuttered, just let him stutter until he got the thought out. You know, I saw him a few years ago. He came backstage at a concert. He said, J -j -j John, I don't know if if you remember me. I did remember him. And he remembered me too. And he was there not because of John Denver, singer, star, whatever. He was there because I'd been a friend to him once upon a time. You know, there, there are things that go on like that. How often do we jump with somebody on somebody else? Who stands up? Who is always there to stand up for what they believe in? and how they feel and the way they want the world to be. I don't always, but I'm working on that. You know, it's like I started, I was always waiting for somebody to start acting the way I think people ought to act, to start doing something about the world and the way it ought to be. And I kept watching for whoever that was gonna be and when it was gonna happen and where it was gonna happen. Well, I found out, folks. It starts right now. If not here, where is it going to begin? It starts right here. And who's going to do it? I'm going to do it. If not me, who? So what I'm doing now is I've, you know, I've put together this concert tour to go out and talk to people about these things. And sometimes it's more focused on hunger and the, and the commission report. And sometimes it's talking to people, high school kids, about, you know, the same kind of thing I spoke to the graduating class here. Most often it's directed at this sense of the world and of how we got to be here and of how we need to turn it around. And it's up to us to do it. It's up to young people. You know, it seems to me we're so caught up in the world now that we really can't see our way out. So if there's going to be a new way and if there's going to be a, a kind of energy it's going to take to, to turn it around now, it's going to come from young people. And we really have to educate them at a time when people seem to be more and more, less and less interested in being educated. You know, why is that? Perhaps it's because what they're getting in schools has nothing to do with the world out there, and the world out there is absolutely meaningless and denying and unfurthering and diminishing. 
Why be involved in that? Why go to school? I think it is possible for each of us, you know, that people start asking me, what, what do you want me to do? Especially when I'm doing these press conferences for the, the Hunger Commission. What do you want me to do? And I think they expect, they want to hear something about going to, uh, you know, writing to your congressman or, or like that, or go giving money and start working with this organization. I, and I, the, all of those things are valuable, but I'll tell you where it begins. It begins where you, in everything that you do, in every relationship that you have, show who you are as a human being, the kind of person that you are. And if you start doing that with a sense that gets to be a little bit more expansive, not just me right here, me and oh, I'm going to protect myself from the world, but me who is with you, you know, the world of human beings. If you start acting like that, then I think all of this other stuff will take care of itself. And there will be countless things that will come up that you can do, specific things that you can do. But where it begins is be yourself, be a human being, recognize that you are one of many on this planet. And no matter how we say it or how we describe it, that we all go for the same things. As an individual and trying to grow and finding out what in the world it is, you know, what is all of this stuff and then how do I relate to all of it and what are the things that I can do and what are the things that I don't do? And who are the people and the places that I have an opportunity to visit and be with? And who do I not get to be with? And who do, this person that I found that I want to be with me for the rest of my life? And then what we want to do to have a children, to have children, to have a child, to have that child grow and become a human being and to grow like I did and to, to do everything I can out of my experience to educate him as to, you know, what the world is like and what to expect and how to deal with it. A world is becoming increasingly complex. Do you think that Iranians do anything different than we do in that regard? Do you honestly think so? Do you think that Russians do anything different? Do you think that Chinese do anything different? I know that they don't. Human experience is the same we are human beings and we experience the world and it is the same for each of us and it is that most clearly which binds us together that in the spirit of life itself and it's time that we start representing that in each and everything that we do it's time to make the world work what I'm here for what the Windstar project is about is simply that harmony in the universe, harmony between people, living, breathing as a single organism, a life that is worth living.